Hi, I'm attorney Greg Dell here with attorney Victor Pena. And today we're going to discuss a recent case that just came out in which Liberty Mutual's um, disability denial was reversed for a variety of reasons of which Victor's gonna discuss, but it was one that we see a lot of, and it's good to see the courts finding the way they did. So Victor, can you talk a little bit about the case and why the decision of Liberty Mutual was reversed? Sure. Um, well, this, this, this case definitely touched on a, um, some issues that we get a lot of calls um, on. Uh, so a lot of people call us frequently asking and not understanding how the Social Security Administration um, can reach one decision and then the insurance company reaches another decision. So um, you're approved from the Social Security Administration uh, for disability benefits and then your insurance carrier cuts you off. Um, and it's kind of hard to answer the question because um, it really depends. Um, you know, unfortunately, insurance companies are allowed to reach a different decision from the Social Security Administration. Um, they are allowed uh, to rely on, on file reviews from some of their doctors in, in many circumstances. But um, what this case really touched on was the fact that um, the insurance company can't do it arbitrarily. They have to provide a reason why. Um, so in this particular case, uh, this claimant had an extensive history of treatment for a back condition, um, a, a lot of uh, medical records dating back to at least 2006. Um, extended to her th uh, thoracic spine. Uh, over the years, she was able to work. Uh, she was able to continue working with continued treatment. Um, but then unfortunately, after a certain period of time, her, her condition progressed to the point where conservative treatment was no longer, no longer controlling the pain. Um, so at some point, uh, 2012, mid-2012, uh, she had to stop working uh, to undergo a lumbar fusion surgery. Um, unfortunately, at that point, uh, following the surgery, her pain didn't subside. Uh, she couldn't return to work, um, and you know she, the, the pain was just too much at that point. Um, so when she filed her claim, Liberty asked her, required that she completed some claim forms, some claiming questionnaires, which clearly documented that she was, um, you know, the condition had progressed. It was progressing over time. Um, concurrent with that, she also applied for Social Security benefits. <clears throat> she was approved. Uh, Liberty Mutual also approved her benefits. They paid her benefits for 24 months. Um, unfortunately, they just paid her for the own occupation period. After those 24 months of benefits, they cut her off. Um, the decision was made based on a file review. Um, that file review found that she was able to perform uh, basically light exertion level, um, a light exertion level occupation. Um, and then based on that file review, they also did a vocational assessment. That consultant found that uh, she could uh, essentially work and perform in, in any other occupation. Um, so based on that decision, they deny the claim. She appealed, of course. Um, she included with her appeal some statements from her treating physician, uh, her primary care physician stating that she could not work on a full-time basis in any occupation due to her continued uncontrolled pain. Liberty, unfortunately, they upheld the decision um, and it led to litigation. So um, when we get to this point, it, it was put in front of a district court out of Michigan. Um, the, the, the judge in this case, or the court in this case, was able to employ a de novo standard of review. And it's very important to understand the distinction here uh, between this case and a lot of other cases um, when we're dealing with uh, ERISA-governed claims. Because a judge employed a de novo standard of review here, as opposed to an arbitrary and capricious, um, it's important to understand that de novo standard is much more favorable to claimants. Um, so it, this decision had a lot to do, I think, with the fact that this standard of review applied here. Uh, the judge or the court eventually did side with the claimant here. They overturned the decision. Uh, but in reaching the decision, they, they gave a lot of weight to the Social Security Administration. And the reason why um, the judge or the court here, they relied on a 2008 Sixth Circuit decision, uh, which found that where the insurance company, where they encourage an applicant to apply for Social Security benefits, um, they benefit financially from the applicant's receipt of those Social Security benefits, and then at the same time, they don't provide an explanation as to how their decision is different from the Social Security Administration as it relates to the disability decision, um, then that, that decision uh, weighs in favor heavily of, the, um, of, of, the, uh, of a finding of arbitrary and capricious, that their decision was arbitrary and capricious. Um, so that, in this particular case, coupled with the fact that um, they also didn't provide an explanation as to how they relied on their own uh, independent reviewers um, opinion over the treating physician's opinion, um, it led to the finding that they should overturn the decision. So basically what happened was once she got approved for Social Security <coughs> Disability Liberty 
didn't say why they disagree with that. Right. And the court, and we see that a lot because the disability companies make these carriers, make these claimants apply for Social Security, they get approved, they take the offset, which means if you get approved for Social Security, Liberty or the disability carrier says, well, we're going to pay you what we owed you less the amount that Social Security is. And here, they're willing to take the offset, but they're willing to say, we don't even, we don't care what Social Security did, and we don't even have to look at it, which was dead right. wrong. Exactly. So um, that's a great ruling. It's going to help tons and tons of claimants because lots of them are approved for Social Security. Now, what we see this game that the disability companies play is they, they send a letter and go, well, we saw your approved for Social Security disability, but their standards are different than ours, and Social Security didn't have everything that we have. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, like the disability company has something that's significantly different than what Social Security had, and they think that's enough. And courts have even blown that out of the water and said, no, it's not enough for you to just say it's different. You've got to explain and go into detail right. as to why it's different. So I'm hoping judges continue to follow that line where they say if you get Social Security and the disability company doesn't really explain why they disagree, then you should continue to be approved because that would be great for claimants. Not every judge believes that way. So that's the trouble. So if you have a long-term disability claim, no matter what stage you're at, feel free to call any of our attorneys for a free consultation. We can help you anywhere in the country and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.